let's see how this goes. Got to get the link to share with people. Alright, I'm just going to hang out for a few minutes and uh, wait for people to uh, hop on. Alright, Hope is asking if I'm going to show off immersive railroading. That's the goal tonight. Let's see. Yeah, this was kind of uh, impromptu. Uh, I'm just uh, starting off from... Uh, just starting off from basics, um, and uh, yeah, I've just been playing in this. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll just talk about where we're at right now uh, before a bunch of people uh, hop on the stream. Um, so this is the first time I've ever live streamed. Um, just been playing around with a single player world, uh, trying to get um, just a general feel for like the cost and the mod, how the progression works. Uh, find issues with uh, the machines and it's it's sometimes good to take a step back uh, f and take off the developer hat and actually play for a bit. It's also uh, in, in many cases a lot more fun because you're not constantly swearing at uh, Java. Uh, well I guess un until you find a bug. Let's see, you got a, uh, a couple more people hopping on now. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah I can, uh, I can try and take some screenshots throughout this. Um, so we can put them on the wiki. All right, the goal for tonight, um, and I'll, I'll just keep talking before I really dive in, is uh, going through uh, two of the basic machines and going uh, and uh, placing down some track. And I'm not sure I have the resources to place too too much track, but I'll use the blueprint feature to go through and show um, some of the quirks with the track system. Um, a, a lot of the issues placing this sort of track in Minecraft is as you place along a curve, if you end up partway through the curve, um, you end up halfway between one block and another block. And in, in Minecraft, that, that, that doesn't really equate to anything. Um, and a having to place a, uh, place a piece of track along that angle just kind of comes out weird. Um, yeah. All right, I'll give it another uh, give it another minute or so. Um, so while I'm waiting for people to join, I'll just give a quick uh, tour of uh, the house I've built so far. So it's a hempcrete roof, a um, bunch of chiseled uh, wood. Just been messing around for the past couple of days in this world. Um, this used to be where I had some of the initial immersive engineering machines. I've I've teched up a bit. You can see the windmills outside. I've got a decent bit of steel uh, produced, but not nearly enough to go too too far in this mod. Um, let's see, I've got a couple project chests there, which I've got a bunch of stuff pre-prepared, so it won't be uh, sitting here watching me uh, craft immersive engineering components for a while. So I've got, hey, there's some more steel. Um, got machines, got a mine. This is, uh, I'm going to say it wrong, but it's it's a Dogmaloo Worlds. I, I always... I, honestly, I have no idea how to pronounce that right. 
Um, but overall, I've actually had quite a lot of fun uh, with this world. The biggest issue is was uh, the ability to find the ores in the first place, because they're non-standard, they don't really conform to uh, specific layers. Um, and if you're doing a, a lot of prospecting and looking around, sometimes it, it, it takes a while to figure out to, you, gotta, you have to dig a hole, poke around, and it's 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 a it's a little bit uh, too Greg Tech ish uh, for, for my liking. Uh, so I've actually made a side mod which will be coming out um, probably this weekend, um, which will give you a sample of what's below the surface, and the, the different tiers will give you uh, better sampling rates. Um, so stone by default, it'll give you like a five percent chance of actually finding what's down there. I think diamond goes all the way up to sixty percent, but it doesn't tell you where the ores are. It doesn't tell you a huge amount of information. It just tells you that hey, you're above an area that could, that probably contains this sort of stuff. Um, yeah. So that that's that's what I've been doing. I've got a horse, been flying around. Horses are fast, but not as fast as trains. So hopefully within the next uh, couple streams, we'll get flying around this world to all the different ore deposits. Um, let's see, the sun's about to go down. Let's see. I kind of want to sleep through the night. I'm, I, this is all on a server, so I could uh, pop the uh, time for it a bit. Um, let's see, any uh, initial questions before I get started? All right. I'm going to sleep through the night and uh, get on our way. All right, someone's asking me to please show the trains. Um, I can, sh well, I, I might be able to show them in uh, JEI, but um, unfortunately I don't really have the resources at this point to craft the different trains. Um, so again, my, on my GUI scale, it's probably not that easy to see. Um, but you can see we've actually got a, quite a wide uh, range. We've got a handful of diesels, a handful of steam locomotives. I may try and make the Firefly. Um, let me see what's involved in that. Real quick. Frame, shell... Eh, maybe. Nah, well, we'll see. Okay. So, it's the next day, um, and I'm, I've started work on a factory over here. Uh, it's pretty basic. I did a little bit of planning in a creative world just to see how much room I was going to need, because these machines are massive. Um, and uh, I've got power run over here. I don't have a huge power setup, so this will be a little bit touch and go, but um, worst, worst comes to worst, I can just pop in a creative capacitor. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you get started with this mod is make the immersive railroading manual. And eventually there will be a wiki inside of here and a bunch of step-by-step -step instructions on how to get moving with the mod. But I'm, there's really only one uh, programmer behind the mod at this point, me. Um, so it's, it's moving at, at, at the pace it can. Um, so looking up the recipe here, it's just some steel and a book. Um, and so let's, let's hop over here, because um, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So there's a bunch of different machines. So I've got this set on rail machine. Shift right click sends it to the different machines. So you can cycle through all the different machines. And uh, yeah, it'll... There's, uh, I think, five or six machines in there now. I may be adding more at some point. Um, and all the textures for these are uh, pretty work in progress. Um, so I'll be either I or one of the modelers, hopefully one of the modelers, because they do a lot better job than I do, uh, will be making a, uh, a better models for all this. Um, so the first, first thing we want to do in this mod is make a casting machine. And the casting machine takes immersive engineering yeah, so, so, so someone just noted uh, it is definitely a late game mod. I've already uh, teched up an immersive engineering. I probably should have gotten a uh, diesel generator, but that'll be coming in another episode or two. Um, but you want a, at least a couple stacks of steel, uh, uh, sorry, a couple stacks of steel blocks to start. Um, I wanted uh, to make sure that this kind of felt real, it kind of forced you to build a lot of infrastructure, really not quite to the level of insanity that is Greg Tech, but a certain amount of... Um, a certain amount of preparation, a certain amount of you're building something big and awesome. 
And if, if anyone has any thoughts on making stuff cheaper, more expensive, hop on Discord and give me some feedback. So we've set this to casting mode. And what I'm going to do is I am going to place down a marker. And I know roughly how big this machine is. So let's just place this down. I want, a, I want a place that every time I click uh, to place down the machine components, I'm going to be clicking in the same exact spot. Um, so if I right click here, it tells me what parts I'm missing. So I need a bunch of stone bricks, some heavy engineering blocks, some sand, some blast bricks, and some steel. So instead of sitting here watching me craft all this, I've spent a couple hours earlier today getting all this prepared. I think that's in here. Yep. All right. See, and in theory, and everything always breaks in a demo, but we'll, we'll see how well this works. Right click, and I'm missing two blast bricks. How about that? Um, <laughs> yes, you are going to see me craft some stuff. Hopefully, I think I've got most of the parts al already. Let's see, blaze powder, bricks, and that. It's blaze powder. And I need four bricks. Let's do. Apologies, this should go reasonably quickly. Uh, uh, hope you're welcome. This has been a huge amount of fun for me. It's been amazing seeing all the stuff that people have been making with this mod. It's just been awesome uh, working with the community. Um, all right, here we go. What's that saying? It's uh, the uh, even the best laid, laid plans don't survive first contact with implementation. Okay, so that placed uh, the last two bricks, and here we go. Um, this uses a slightly different uh, system than the immersive engineering multi-blocks. Um, I was originally going to have all this fully integrated with immersive engineering, hence the name immersive railroading. Um, but due to some licensing changes um, in immersive engineering, I've decided that it's safest for me if I go through and uh, build the mod so that it can work with immersive engineering, but it doesn't require it. At the moment it does, but within the next uh, month or so, uh, I'll be going through and, uh, and, and making it a little bit more flexible. Um, so, I made this part early, early as well. This is the, uh, the large wrench. This is used in a lot of the different um, uh, mechanics of the mod. But it's uh, similar for immersive engineering as it's used to uh, configure the different multi-blocks. So if I right click, um, here we go. It replaces it with my fairly awful texture, um, but it works. So let's see, I've got a couple ladders on here. The way this machine works is you feed power into the top, excuse me, and then you toss uh, immersive engineering steel blocks. And because I'm quite lazy from time to time, where did I put my ladders? That's oh, over here. Um, I have not made it work with other mod steel. Um, that's been on my to-do list for quite some time now, and I promise I will get uh, get to it at some point. And not quite high enough. Let me just steal this for a bit. Let's see, someone's asking, what's the inspiration for making this mod? I've always loved trains, been a huge fan ever since I was uh, really little. And uh, I've been playing with model trains, but living, uh, living in a place where there isn't a huge amount of room, um, I, I, I still have a small layout, but um, it's not nearly as much room as I'd like. So for the time being, um, it was mostly I wanted some way to uh, have, have, have fun with trains, which I've loved all my life. And uh, also had a huge addiction to Minecraft, and I did that wrong, didn't I? Um, so I, I brought the two together. I'd, I'd seen some of the work that the Rails of War people and the Traincraft uh, folks have done. Um, I was originally thinking about uh, working with uh, the Traincraft people, funnily enough, but again, the way they license that just doesn't uh, agree with my own philosophies. Um, so I ended up uh, just doing my own thing. Um, I'm actually working on an initiative uh, which is called the Track API, which means uh, ZND, uh, Immersive Railroading, 
and I've actually been talking to Eternal Blue Fra uh, Flame um, about uh, getting his mod using it as well. Uh, so it would mean that the stock wouldn't necessarily work together, but if you laid, uh, let's say, part of immersive uh, railroading railway and then part of it a Z and D railway, it would all uh, work together. The trains would be able to go across the different uh, tracks, the different gauges. Um, so I, I respect all the work that everyone else has done, um, and I, I hope to uh, work with them in the future on that. Let's see, someone's uh, let's see, uh, suggestion in Discord. Uh, hang on, just a sec. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, Doom Weddles uh, asks about making stuff cheaper to start out. One thing I've uh, thought about is uh, making a villager which you can trade for really cheap model trains. Okay, you're on... Uh, uh, if, <laughs> if I'm not responding, you got to give me a sec. This is my first time doing this. How do you start trains? Um, so I'll take a quick sidebar. When you right-click on the train and, and mount it, uh, you can open up your key, uh, your key controls. Uh, let me do this now. If you go down to the bottom, because I'm lazy again, I haven't uh, uh, made, I haven't uh, done the proper localization. But it tells you your air brake, your throttle, all the different controls. Sound horn coming soon. All the sounds are coming soon in the next month or so. It's not as easy as it looks. Um, and if you're in a diesel, you fill it with uh, biodiesel or diesel. If you're in a steam locomotive, you fill it with water, and you keep water in it, otherwise it'll explode. And then in the lower slots, you put uh, a coal or pr uh, pretty much anything burn uh, burnable. Let's see. Okay. Um, let's see. Small, oh, small scale early production. Okay, you mean smaller versions of these machines? Let's see. So that should be powered up. Um, I'm still getting used to the YouTube uh, lag. Let's see. And it's almost nighttime. Let's see, let me grab some of my still blocks. Um, yeah, I, I, I think TC is pretty awesome, um, but unfortunately, I, I've got a fairly uh, hippie style um, uh, philosophy toward programming. Immersive railroading is licensed in such a way that if I go nuts or I get hit by a bus or something happens to me, any, anyone in the world, anyone in the world who feels like it, can take, any, take every piece of what I've done and make it their own. The only thing they have to do is give proper credit back to me and the modelers and keep it under the same open license. It's the idea that building a community uh, building a community is stronger than, than just keeping it uh, contained and keeping things private. Um, it's the philosophy behind the Linux kernel. It's the philosophy behind GNU. Um, most people don't realize it, but most software you run these days is actually <laughs> built with some piece of that philosophy ingrained. Um, so... Uh, but anyway, so Rails of War and uh, uh, Traincraft, they're both licensed in such a way that I can't really modify it. I, to a certain extent, I am subject to the, wh whoever's running the project, um, and I'm not a huge fan of that. All right, so I tossed a steel block in there, and what I've got to do is give it a little bit of power. And let's see. Hopefully. There we go. So that melted toss some more in. You can see it goes up. Um, if you toss anything else in there, it's going to die. If you jump in there, you're going to die. Okay, so let's see. Any other questions? All right. Okay, so here's this UI. This UI is going to change in the next week or so. I've gotten a lot of feedback on this. This was really a really temporary interface. Um, the top piece allows you to choose the gauge. Um, for now, actually, I think I'm going to go model gauge just because that's uh, th that's the cheapest for now. Um, uh, well, actually, yeah, I'll, 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 yeah I'm, actually, I'm, I'm just going to keep a standard gauge. Um, so the next thing we do is we click on what exactly we're going to be uh, forging here. Let's see. So okay, so so someone's asking about uh, uh, Traincraft again. It's not actually it's it's open source, but it's not it's not free software. And, and the difference is, is in the licenses. And, and, and I could go on for probably an hour talking about this, and I, I probably will in some other future stream. Uh, but long story short, there's a very distinct difference between 
open software and free software. Free software means that you have the freedom to do with that software whatever you please as long as it, it, it continues to be free. Uh, open source software means, hey, I can see what's going on here, but it doesn't clear up a lot of the licensing issues with saying, hey, I want to do something with this. I want to work with this code. I want to make a revision of this. I want to contribute back to this. It, re it really muddies the water, and honestly, I feel it's, it doesn't promote good community growth. But that's, that's, that's my philosophy. Um, yeah. Okay, so in this UI, you can see we've got a bunch of different pieces. I don't have nearly enough steel, as someone suggested, to forge the big boy yet. It is one of my favorite locomotives, and it's absolutely a beautiful piece of engineering. Uh, but as an example, I can pull this up, and you can see here's all the different parts. Um, and yes, I do, I'm quite aware that I've got a bug that means this does not scale correctly. Um, and I'll be fixing that at some point. Um, but it allows you to choose all the different pieces. I'm not actually, actually going to select that now because it'll go through and try and craft it for me. Um, at some point, I may re uh, revisit this UI, make it a little bit cleaner. But for, for now, it's functional. It works. Um, but again, the whole purpose of... Uh, okay, and, okay, so someone just asked about the entire big boy being seven blocks. You actually have to make a bunch of each of these components. So I think, yeah, so you need to make four of these, four of these, one of these, one of these... Um, Two of each of those, uh, four of each of these. I gotta go sleep soon. Nope, I'm good. Um, yeah, yes, it's, it's, it should be able to hold 64 blocks. Uh, anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm getting a little bit off track. Um, so again, we're, the whole purpose of this is to uh, start placing down some tracks, start getting a feel for how this system fits together. It's not intuitive, and that's one of the big reasons why I want to stream this and get live feedback as I go through the different steps. So I set this to rail casting, and I hit escape. And you can see there's some particle effects going on up there, and there's a hissing noise in the background, which you can't hear because I'm still working out all, all of my audio issues. Let's see. And there we go. We now have this absolutely massive <laughs> chunk of steel uh, to work with. And right now, we can't actually do anything with this. Um, this is uh, just a casting. This is a raw hunk of iron, or sorry, steel. Um, so what we need to do is we need to roll this piece of, uh, of steel into its final shape and break it up into pieces that we can work with. So the next machine we're going to make, and I'm just grabbing the materials here, which I prepared er earlier, and hopefully I didn't forget anything this time, is we're going to make a rail machine. And this is one of the few machines that actually has uh, a bit of an animation in it. Um, and this is, I'm actually really happy with how that turned out. It, it'll get even better over time. So I right click and it places it all down. Um, and then I right click with a wrench and it forms it. So sorry, I was, I was, I was talking about um, animation. So this one has some basic animations on it. Other, other pieces will have more advanced animations as time goes on. Um, the general shape and mechanics will probably stay the same for at least a year or two um, because it works, it works reasonably well, and uh, yeah. Let's hop up here. So one thing I haven't really talked about is there's a red square here and a uh, yellow square here. This red square in the future will be used for redstone control. Right now it's non-functional. Um, I put all this in just as a basic, let, let's start getting feedback. Let's start getting uh, people starting to play with the mod and, and see how stuff works. Um, let's see. Plop that there. And I'm going to need to... Uh, that's too far. Where can I put this to? All right. Yep, yeah, I, I see your comment, Hope. Um, yeah, that is that is definitely part of the plan. I've actually been talking with um, uh, uh, Adam R.K., who's also planning on doing some models for the mod. Uh, just some, uh, like, uh, come on, I cannot attach that wire here. Um, he's planning on doing some rolling stock models. Um, but he's also got some really strong ideas about how exactly moving parts between um, machines should work, what the, how the different machines should, should work. Um, it's a lot more complicated than what I'm prepared to do at the moment, but in the next year or two, we're thinking about starting a Steelworks mod, which has that more realistic, uh, the components cool down over time, you have to reheat them if they cool down too much, that sort of stuff. It's going to be really cool, but 
I've only got so much time in the day, and I actually work uh, 40 hours a week, so uh, this is really only st something I can spend... Um, uh, that was kind of productive. Uh, my weekend's on and whatever free, uh, free time I get. So, this is plugged in, it's got power. Uh, you can see the rollers inside. Um, and let's plop this on here. And you can see, it takes the uh, red hot metal and turns it into this. When I right click, it picks it up. And now we have rail segments. And rail segments are the final product here. Um, these are actually pulled right off of the model, which is pretty cool. So if you retexture the rail, you get a slightly different end product. Uh, let me eat something before I starve, and we'll move on to the next segment. So, um, at this point, uh, we have our rails, but we can't place them down in the world. If we right-click, it really doesn't do anything. Um, so if we hop in here, I've already prepared the next piece. So this is the track blueprint. This is one of the cooler items in the mod. Um, it's also one of the more confusing items in the mod, uh, primarily because of the way the integers work. And if you hop on Discord, I'll give you a lecture about what that actually means. Um, so let's do something basic for now. And I'm going to toss that out of my inventory real quick so you can see what happens. I can't actually place this. Th this treated wood, those are used as the ties. At some point, I'm going to be making my own ties, but uh, at this point, using immersive engineering for this works just fine. Let's see. All right, so you can right click with that and we get a piece of track. Look at that. Um, and you can see there's uh, blocks on the ground here um, that represent where the track actually goes. Break that and we get the parts back. All right, um, so let's start looking at some of the options here. Um, the first one is like, uh, so the different types. So straight crossing slope, turn and switch. There may be f more of these in the future, but this is what we've got right now. So crossing looks like that. Let's break this. And, and just, a, just a side note, as I'm going through this, all of the costs for when you're placing down uh, the rails in the rail bed are ac actually, uh, you can uh, configure that in the, uh, in the immersive railroad and config. Um, the lower the number, the cheaper it is to place down track. Um, so we can change the length here. Let's uh, let's place down a slope. Now this is that's ah, not happy about that. That's too short. That's that's interesting. Oh, you know what? I'm out of sync. I've got to disconnect and reconnect. That's one of the problems. Is the synchronization between the tile entities, client and server side. I'm still working on getting that working correctly. Let's break you. All right, um, just a sec. All right, so let's place down a turn. There we go. And you can see it's taking the pieces out of my inventory and using them to place. Let's see, I'm going to have to sleep the night. I should have brought a bed out here. That would have been smarter. Let's see. I guess I'll use this uh, time to say, I'll, I'll be putting a link to uh, the Immersive Railroading Discord um, in the description once I post this video. I should have put it, uh, yeah, I should have put it um, in the uh, in the info. This is, again, first time streaming. I'm still getting used to all this stuff. Um, but the, uh, um, uh, I, I hang out on Discord quite a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer questions. There's a great community there. A um, bunch of people who are uh, ready and willing to help you uh, start having fun with this mod. Let's see. Okay, so uh, let's see, what's the next thing I'm gonna do? I'm gonna s turn this back to straight mode and we can make this, let's say, 15 blocks long. Let's see if I've got enough resources for that. I do. So that is now slightly longer. You can see that placing this down, I get a preview. The preview doesn't work perfectly. You can see <laughs> there's a couple angles here which are a little bit off. Let's see. Yeah, and if anyone wants to download this mod, it is available on CurseForge. Uh, just search for immersive uh, railroading. Let's see. And uh, yeah, people keep asking me to stream more. I am happy to do so. This is actually quite fun. I used to do ham radio in college, and this is not that different, uh, interestingly enough. All right, so again, we can change the length. The preview works some of the time, but there's some weird angles which I still have to fix. Um, let's place this down at a 45 degree. 
And you can see it's placed down just like that. Let's see. Okay, so let's get into some of these other options. Uh, I'm going to, yeah, let's go over uh, railbed fill. Uh, what do I have in my inventory? Uh, I have sand, I have dirt. Dirt will work. Let's see. All right, let's change this back down to, let's do 10. Rail bed. Okay, so let me explain what uh, rail bed is. Rail bed is an aesthetic feature that shows kind of a, uh, a bump uh, that's mixed in w with uh, the track, so it, allow it allows you to look like there's uh, there's uh, like stones or it's 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 been built as part of a platform. Uh, let me just uh, show you; it'll be easier to explain that way. There we go, dirt. And if we place this down, and my com and I still have to fix that bug. I'll be relogging a bit here and there. See, if you don't like blowing up steam engines, there's a config option which completely disables explosions. Um, your trains may still break um, if it gets too hot, but it uh, it won't actually destroy parts of your world. All right, so I place that down, and you can see it's placed down these, I guess you could call them uh, markers or just little indicators about where the track actually goes. So when the train is moving, and I'll, I'll get to this uh, probably next episode, um, is it shows this is... These are the places where the train knows that it can move on. It, it then does a bunch of math to say, okay, I actually have to follow the rails that are here, but as long as it's sitting on these uh, guide blocks here, it, sh it should work just fine. Um, so you can change that to any material um, you want. And uh, it again shows in the blueprint, um, which is pretty handy. Uh, let's see, I'll, I'll leave that. Actually, I'm going to turn that off just so we can see what's going on. Railbed fill is a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to set the railbed fill to dirt. So railbed fill is what you use to make bridges. So I'm going to actually, I'm just, I'll just make a huge hole in the floor because why not? I'll fix it later. There we go. So normally if we were to place this over here, let me turn this off. It gives me these big red markers here that says, um, you are completely not allowed to place a track here, and you just won't do anything if I right-click. Um, let's see, uh, someone just asked, where do I live? I, leave, I live on the East Coast US. Uh, depending on the time of year, I move up and down a little bit. Um, I'll give you a hint, I grew up near Alco, uh, American Locomotive Company, uh, absolutely beautiful part of the, part of the world, um, except for all the dumping in the Mohawk, which made it absolutely disgusting. <laughs> but that's, that's a rant for another time. Um, let's see. Uh, as far as meeting up, um, I, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that. But there's, uh, there's, there's, I mean, there's events like Minecon. I actually I did uh, better than Minecon last year, which was, or yeah, yeah, it was last year at this point, which was a ton of fun. So I'll, I'll definitely be doing that again. Uh, but yeah, I'll keep an eye on conventions and stuff where I can go. Um, and if I go visit a scenic railway or museum, I'll I'll post something in Discord and say, hey, if I'll I'll be here at this time. And yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I'd, I'd be open to that. Let's see, let's see. Okay, so getting back to this, we set rail bed fill. Uh, let's set, set it to cobblestone. That's not gonna work because we're missing nine cobblestone. Let's set it to dirt and we place that down and it created a bridge. Um, it doesn't actually <laughs> do uh, physics calculations on the st uh, structural integrity of the bridge it's making because in the real life this would all just collapse. Uh, but this is Minecraft, so real world physics only barely apply when you want them to. So this is handy. I've done huge overpasses. Uh, I've done trestles across uh, uh, lakes, all sorts of stuff. Um, hugely, uh, oh man, I use that word. Um, it's 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 a really useful feature. Um, so let's break that. Um, and something to note is when you're placing in creative. Normally, if I do this, you see me these red indicators saying, "Hey, there's a block here. You can't actually place your your track going through here." Um, it's it's gonna hoot and holler about that. If you're in creative mode, it'll actually break uh, the blocks for you, um, which means if you're in creative, you can make tunnels, you can blast your way through a mountainside just using these rails, um, and it takes a huge, it cuts a huge amount of time out of the process of building a creative railway. Let's see. All right, let's go into 
So, okay, so you can change the gauge here. This is the same click through before. Um, I'm just going to leave that for now. I may go into this in a future episode, um, but there's position fixed, and I'll get to that in a sec. This place blueprint, this is what you're going to use if you're going to be planning a large railway, or you're going to be planning a large yard. But you don't actually want to uh, go through and make all the materials until you're sure roughly how much you're going to want to need. So I can place this down, and it places down a ghost track. And trains uh, cannot travel on this. But you can see there's this little kind of indicator here. I should make something a little bit more clear that this is where the, uh, this is where the blueprint goes. Um, so I can walk through here, but this is showing me where exactly this track would be if I were to place it down. And to place it, I can either break this and place down the track, or I can shift click on it, and it places down the track. And that'll become really helpful in a second. This, if anyone's just hopping on, this is probably the most important piece of the stream, because this is going to go over how the fl uh, flexible track placement works. Um, so that that's pretty handy, and I'll, I'll get to flex in just a sec, but if I right-click on this, I can change this. So let's say I actually want it be, to be 20 long, or I only want it to be 10 long. You can change all the settings in here, and it updates the blueprint. Let's say, oh, I actually wanted this to be a turn. There we go, it's a turn. And I could place that down. I'm not going to, so I'm just going to normal break it without holding shift, and it goes away. This is hugely, uh, really helpful if you're just planning out a yard. Um, or, or anything for that matter. Um, so the next piece, and this is something that is, a lot of people haven't really had a, much of a chance to play with, is changing this to pixels or smooth mode. I'm going to do pixels first because it snaps a little bit nicer. So if you look on the screen now, I'm moving back and forth, but it's not actually locked to a block. Um, so I can place it down. Let's do it like that. And do that. And it's placed at that offset. This isn't this isn't locked to the standard uh, block mathematics. It places it down a little bit uh, differently, which is which is interesting. Um, and one of the parts that I'm not sure how many people actually know that this works is if you hold Shift, you can right click, and I'm holding Shift and right click, and I can change how this fits in here before I place it. If you're placing a switch and it's not, it's just not lining up or you're placing a turn or a straight, or you're doing anything at one of the weird 45 or 22.5 angle, uh, angle, uh, angle pieces, this is the way you get it to place correctly. So if I move it all the way over to this side, shift click, it places it right there. So what I can do just as a, let's, let's, let's do a real world example for this. Um, how do you turn off explosions? Open up the config and it's, actually let me look, look that up right here. You should be able to see this if I set this up right. Uh, explosions enabled. Change that true right here. Change that to a false. Um, and you should definitely read through all, all this config stuff. There's a bunch of interesting stuff like fuel required true. Uh, that allows you to make it, hey, you're building a creative world. You don't actually want to fuel, fuel your locomotives. Um, if, you want, if you don't want trains to be able to break blocks as they're moving, tr uh, turn that off. This will be disabled in the next update, the debug infinite liquids. This, this means that whenever you place down a train and you start filling it with liquid, it uh, fills all the way automatically and doesn't use, um, uh, use any liquid. You can disable particles if you don't think your computer can handle it. And trains on the brain, that's just self-explanatory. Um, but let, let's get back to this example. Um, yeah, and, and as Steel PC Gaming makes a good point is if you if you're going down the track and it doesn't quite line up, the trains are smart enough to either hop the gap in most cases um, or shift where they're going. It's not terribly realistic, but you know what? Th this is Minecraft, and at some point um, it's just going to get too tedious. It's getting a little bit dark, so I'm going to have to do this quick. So let's, let's just place down a small piece of track here, and let's set this to fixed, and place that. And I'm going to come back in just a sec, because I have to sleep through the night. How do you cool them down if the water is full? Uh, oh, there, there's a bug where if you overheat the locomotive a little bit, you can overheat them a little bit before they explode. They don't necessarily calm all the way back down. You have to let the locomotive fully calm, uh, uh, sorry, uh, cool down before that bar starts going down. Or you could just uh, break and replace the locomotive. Um, so some of the um, calculations in there to determine uh, the pressure and volume and temperature um, they're kind of rough, rough estimates at this point. 
let's see, if, uh, if you built the big boy, do you know how many cars it can hold? So in a single player world, and this, is, this was pushing my computer quite a bit, I got it able to haul a train of 350 wagons, <laughs> which was pretty insane. Um, I, was st I was still at 20 TPS, um, and, and the crazy part about this mod is I've, even if the TPS goes down to 4, it's still silky smooth most of the time. Um, I've done some really, really interesting stuff with the way the network communication works in this mod, and I may even be doing a demo of that in one of the future streams, is, let's see, okay, uh, is, uh, is, is, is the fact that even as the network hiccups, the network, network hiccups are harder to predict, but as the server slows down or speeds up, the client changes how quickly it's iterating through the, the, the movement, so it's silky smooth. Um, so if, if you, even if you're on a server that's got in, uh, going 4 TPS, your trains will still be moving slowly, but they'll be uh, moving smooth. Let's see, Joseph Young asks, uh, can you place down ghost tracks if there are blocks in the way? You definitely can. You can place down the ghosts, it'll show you where you need to break, break blocks. Let me actually go do a quick example, take a break from this. Um, so if I'm gonna place this down, let's say here, you can see those kind of flashing red indicators here saying, hey, you can't actually place stuff here. And when you break it, that goes away. Um, let me fix that. Get rid of that. And back onto what I was doing before. All right. Uh, so let's let's do one of the harder examples. Let's do a turn. Let's do one quarter. And oh, oh, that was I completely glossed over that. Let me <laughs> show you what turn quarters do. Um, let's do this. All right. And you don't actually ever want to uh, turn this this small in world. Um, so what turn quarters do is if you watch this here, you're making different, uh, so it's, 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 so 90 degrees gets broken up into four quarters. And I'm a programmer, I'm absolutely awful at naming things. <laughs> if anyone has a better suggestion for what that thing should be called, let me know. Um, and I'll, I'll probably adopt it. Um, so, so, so you can change the quarters. And if you're doing 90 degrees, uh, doing four quarters, you don't really have to do any flexible track. It all just kind of fits most of the time. But if you're doing stuff like one quarter, which is pretty cool, um, it uh, th there you can run into some issues. So I'm not actually I'm, I'm not actually yeah, I'll, I'll I'll place this down. So now we've got this. So let's go to place our straight track down. We want to go off in this direction. Hey, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. What's going on? Um, so what we can do is set this to smooth mode. Now you can see, as I'm coming here to place this down, I can line it up exactly. Right click, and it places down the blueprint, and make sure, yep, these are the settings I want, and I wanna shift click, and there it is. So this, this is one of the things that stumps people most about this mod, is this uh, smooth uh, placement mode. And uh, yes, tra uh, tracks can be rotated in 12 directions if I'm pretty sure that math is right. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's see. And if you hit this bouncy stuff, just jump away. That's, again, part of the entity syncing. I'm going to make a few more rails so I can keep playing. Let's do this, and we'll come back to that in a sec. Do I have any pieces? Switch this back to turn. Set that to three. Let's do two quarters. And... I'm going to need to relog because of the uh, tile sync problem. I'll have that fixed in a week or two. It's It's been bugging me. Um, uh, the network code and syncing uh, tile entities in Minecraft is one of the weirder things you can do. Uh, okay. Oops. Fell in a hole. Let's see. Actually, that's, that's going to be weird. I'm going to just do three, do one quarter, and there we go. So let's place that there. Uh, set. Let's make that a little bit longer. Let's do five, six. I'll do, do 10, that's what we had before. So if we place this here, this is gonna be fine right here, but the problem is, when I go to place a straight track here, I'd really like this, actually, sorry, let me take a look at comments. Let's see, someone's asking about double-heading locomotives. That already works. Uh, steam locomotives, you gotta have two people or walk between the locomotives um, to control it. Um, if you're doing uh, diesel, uh, then it actually hooks them all together electronically, or quote-unquote electronically, uh, such that 
If you change the throttle on one diesel locomotive, any other diesel locomotive on the train changes its throttle and brake accordingly, uh, which is pretty handy. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, double heading works well. That was, there's some pretty fun stuff you could do with that. All right, so let's uh, switch this to, yeah, 10 works. Let's do straight, get out of smooth mode. And we're gonna want this to, let's, let's just have it line up about there-ish. And I'm gonna grab a, f whoa, that's fun. Someone reported that bug to me. Um, oh, you know what, I don't have enough steel in there. Hang on. Someone re reported that bug where I'm not setting the, uh, I do a lot of awful, awful OpenGL stuff to get this working. Um, and that, that transparency seal is just an issue on my part. It should be fixed in the next version. Yeah, steam locomotives are harder to operate, but the uh, the sounds which are coming soon next month um, or so, um, man, just just the 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 animations are. It's just been, it, it just makes it all worthwhile. All right, so so we've got this set, but this doesn't quite line up. So again, this is where that smooth placement comes into play, um, and you can kind of fiddle around, and that right there should do it. So place you down and place you down. And there we go. That's how you do a, f a somewhat flexible track in, uh, in the mod. So that's <laughs> probably the most important thing I'm gonna be showing in any of these spotlights, <laughs> to be honest, because it's not intuitive. It's not something that you would go, oh, it obviously works this way. But once you get the knack of it, it works, it works remarkably well. Um, and as, as I'm pretty sure I mentioned before, there's some other mods coming along which have some better track placement systems as, in terms of making smooth shapes and, and turns, um, which I are, hopefully will be compatible with, um, which is the reason why I have to download the track API when you install uh, immersive railroading. Let's see. I just have depleting. Yeah, so it, it, it automatically pulls uh, coal out of the tender and puts it in the locomotive. In the, right now it does it with all of them. In the future, it's only going to do it with cer uh, certain of them. Uh, I'm going to add a config so that only some of the more modern stock, which has the augers um, between the tender and uh, the actual firebox, um, where it, it uh, have, have it be limited to the, uh, those uh, specific pieces of stock. <clears throat> Excuse me, I haven't talked this much for a while. <laughs> All right, so that right there is track placement. Um, let's uh, let's place it, place down some model gauge just for fun. Let's see what other questions. How come the slope tracks are broken and odd? Because slopes are broken and odd. Um, slope, slope tracks, um, if you're doing something like uh, 15 long or 20 long, it should, in theory, work just fine. Um, th there are one or two vis uh, visual glitches where toward the end of the slope it doesn't exactly line up. Um, but I I've seen people try and use like length 10 uh, slopes on uh, w with normal locomotives. That's that's just gonna that's just not gonna work. I I've got to add. Uh, uh, limitations to the track placement system it said, that says, hey, you're trying to place down a slope, but it has to be at least 15 blocks long, otherwise it's not going to make sense. Um, let's do model, and let's grab that. All right. Do that. And each of the pieces, as you choose uh, smaller gauges in here, um, it goes through and uses less material. So you saw how that cast much, much quicker. Um, it was, a, it was a much cheaper cast. So if, if you're gonna start off, you don't have a lot of resources, it might, it might be worth uh, playing around with uh, narrow gauge or, uh, or even model gauge first. Model gauge, <laughs> even though it doesn't seem like it would be hugely useful, it can still carry a decent amount of uh, stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, da -da. I you've got a fireman. Into the speeder. Yeah, hand carts. That is actually, I wonder if I can make that now. Hand car. I think I might be able to make that. Let me do this real quick. That was an excellent idea. Uh, who suggested that? Um, see, that was, uh, that was uh, Joseph Young and uh, Steel PC Gaming. Let's see. This, uh, electrics will be coming at some point. Let's do hand car. And we'll do the frame. I should start casting. No, I don't have enough steel in there. Let's see. Let's see if I'm gonna exhaust all my steel. 
<laughs> Let's see. It won't actually start casting until you have enough in there. Oh dear, that was all my steel. Uh, I might have more back at the base. Yeah, so it, it already so hopes uh, says you should make it sort of like a mini game. I do have more steel, um, where it's you have to play with the uh, throttle and, br and brake uh, to uh, to control the locomotives. It's it's already like that. When you hop on, it gives you a throttle slider and a brake slider, and uh, depending on how you run the locomotive, you can actually run it really efficiently uh, if you if you're patient, or you can run it really inefficiently if you're not patient uh, or, or don't don't understand the mechanics. So there's already a couple mini games in there. Um, if, if you play around with it. Uh, did I choose that? Oh, it did cast. Okay. That was actually just quicker than I thought. Uh, so let's do hand car again. I think I need two wheels. All right, there's the... Ta-da. And let's grab the other wheel. Okay. There we go. So I think that's it. Let's see. So that's down. Place those in. The components pop right on, and that appears to be functional. All right, so I don't have any brakes because hand cars don't brake terribly well at this point, but it is functional. There we go. Uh, smaller gauges. Um, the biggest disadvantage is they can't carry as much and they don't go as fast. If you're going to do be doing uh, passenger service across multiple kilometers, you probably want to have uh, uh, you probably want to have uh, um, have it on standard gauge. Standard gauge, if your server and client can uh, uh, hold up to it, it'll actually go up to 100 miles an hour if you if you build the peppercorn. And uh, I've, uh, the code itself can actually go up to about Mach 1. <laughs> I may have tested that in a single-player world. Um, uh, so, so the actual physics calculations will handle at least Mach 1. I think I got it up to Mach 2 at one point. Um, I'm not actually planning on adding any stock into the mod that goes quite that fast, but um, the, the biggest disadvantage is inventory size and speed. Um, yeah, so that's, that's working reasonably well. Um, I think that's all I can make for today before I make other... Uh, there's a few more machines I need, that I need before I can really dive too deeply into this. Um, let's see. What was, oh yeah, I was playing with the model gauge. Uh, let's see, someone's asking, make it so you can paint or design our own trains. Uh, right now, if you know how to do 3D modeling, uh, uh, if you open up like something like Blender or Maya or AutoCAD or even Google... I, this, this right here, this was made in Google SketchUp. As much as it's not the best modeling program out there, it's really easy to pick up, and you can export into such a way that it'll, you can eventually convert it into an object, an MTL file. And once you have an object, an MTL file, you can load in stock through the resource pack system. Uh, so a lot of the times when I'm working with new modelers who have just hopped on uh, the Discord and have started uh, asking questions, uh, as soon as they have a model that's reasonably uh, put together and has all the requisite parts, will go through, set up a resource pack, and load it into their game so they can start playing with it. Um, it's hugely flexible, and at some point, w once the amount of stock in this mod gets to a certain level, um, I'll, I'll have to go through and break it out into a couple packs where you get a few locomotives and a few cars to start, and then you'll have to choose, do I want the Pennsylvania Railroad pack? Do I want the modern pack? Do I want uh, the, the old school pack? Uh, uh, w w whatever that ends up being. Um, See, as, as far as painting goes, I really want to do that at some point, but it's a really, really hard problem to solve, and I honestly don't know how to do it at this point. Um, there's a bunch of different ways, or sorry, rather, I, I, I know of a couple different ways to do it, but I, I don't know the right way to do it yet. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of putting that off for a while. Let's see, someone's asking another question. Uh, new name for the curve uh, quarters. Yeah, yeah, Discord's an excellent place um, uh, to post that. Um, dash 8 standard gauge, 30 cars full, throttle. Uh, one second to pass. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but yeah, it's the the the, the dash eight's got a decent amount of power behind it. Um, let's see, where was I going? Right, model gauge. I had stopped to answer questions. So you can see this is annotated as gauge model. This is annotated as gauge standard. So we can set this to model gauge, and we place it down. We've got model train track. How about that? Um, and because I 
don't have a huge amount of uh, resources left. Let me again make one of these. And I made that standard gauge again because I'm an idiot. Model gauge, and car. I really need to make this UI a lot better. Put that over here. Let's see other questions coming in. Uh, all right. Uh, yes, uh, it's hopefully next time I'll be more prepared and start this early so more people can uh, hop on and watch. Uh, let's see. So yes, uh, people are working on a bunch of different uh, pieces of stock at this point. There's there's uh, there's new cars every single update, and new locomotives usually every other update. Uh, proper railroad signs, those are coming. Again, it's it's really, there's one person writing code at this point. There's only so much I can do in a week. Um, let's see, and one more of these. Man, those are tiny. I should limit the size that that can go down to. All right, itty bitty. <laughs> I haven't actually put this on here. This is really, really small. Is that hitbox too small? That hitbox is too small. That's pretty funny. Well, it looks like <laughs> I'm putting in a bug report for that. That's hilarious. Yeah, that bounding box should update based on that. Huh. Well, I'll break that later. Let's see. Let's see. Hey, uh, okay, so something we can do, because um, I'm almost out of stuff to go over for now, other than just answering questions, is, and we're actually almost hitting an hour. I'll, I'll talk for a few more minutes, minutes, and we'll wrap it up ar around the hour mark, because I do have to work tomorrow. Um, let's see. So we've got a bunch of detectors in here, and these are used for all sorts of stuff. Um, so let's see. Uh, or sorry, not detector. We, uh, augments. I've called it uh, augments. So there's speed retarders. Those, if you apply a redstone signal, it slows down whatever's going across. I can make some of those and show them. Water trough, if you've got a uh, tender going over this at high speed, it will automatically fill up the tender if you've piped water into it. Locomotive control will automatically set the throttle and brake of any uh, anything going over. I'll add more. There's more docs coming on that at some point. Um, but just pl play around with redstone and different redstone levels, and you'll, you'll figure out how it works. Item loader, item unloader, uh, you can pipe in and out of those. Um, there's not really a lot of good stuff in immersive engineering that allows for that um, because you can't extract from inventory. So if you've got something like thermal expansions, item ducts, um, or mechanism stuff, it, it, you should it, it'll interact a little bit better. Um, some kind of might add auto ejecting into other adjacent inventories, but again, everything's a function of time. Fluid loader, fluid unloader, same mechanics. I, I showed some of those in the beta spotlight, so you can check that out. And the detector. Um, this is a redstone detector, so let's plop that down. And here we go. So do I have any redstone on me? I don't. I was not prepared to do this. <laughs> Alright, uh, have a good night, Hope. Um, yeah, Iron Giant has been one of my favorite movies for many, many years. Um, it's, uh, yeah. It's, it's, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's wonderful. It's a kids movie, but it's it's heartbreaking. It's 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 heartwarming. It's 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 just wonderful. Um, all right, so let's plop this down and start playing with this. Uh, let's do that. And oops. Now well, this is this is on a corner. Let me move this. So to remove an augment, you shift right click. Let's do this on a straight because that's simplest. Let's plop redstone down here. And if I were smarter, I would have had a note block or some other light set up for that. Let's see. Can you add the UP Challenger? At some point, most definitely. That is an absolutely beautiful locomotive. Let's see. Daylight, definitely. I actually got to see uh, the daylight with, uh, with uh, people working on it at the Oregon Heritage Railway Museum. If you're ever in Oregon... Make sure you check it out. It's uh, it's a little bit of a walk from their uh, light rail system. I'm going to go off the track here in a sec if I'm not careful. Um, hmm? Come on. There we go. All right. So you can see, as I travel over this, um, it automatically lit up the redstone. Let's see if I can park it on there. Let's see. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, uh, so... Uh, yeah, I got to see the daylight when they were working on it and starting to uh, do its, I think it was 10-year, 15-year inspection. Had people climbing all through it. It was, it was awesome. 
Um, let's see. Can you run an A4 class? Definitely. So what I've what I've said a few times, uh, I think in Discord, and maybe as part of one of my spotlights, but I don't remember, is that um, right now I've got the A1 peppercorn, the tornado, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, sleek, modern, hit 100 miles an hour just a month or two ago uh, in uh, on the main line. Um, I'm going to be taking that model and uh, refurbishing it over the next couple weeks. And uh, once that's up to snuff, I'll be making a couple other uh, A-class specifics. Um, yes, you are who you choose to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there's, there's, all, there's all, sorts, or, all sorts of people working from all over the world on adding stock. Um, all right. What? Sorry, I, I keep getting distracted. Um, what was I doing? I was working on detectors. I was working on stock going over. I was going to sleep because it's getting late. Um, I had grabbed some redstone. Let's see. Someone's saying they're having problems with uh, coupling. Uh, come, uh, come ask me some questions in Discord later. Um, I'll, I'll be happy to, to talk about that. Coupling is mostly working. There's still some quirks, and it's not exactly... Uh, pos uh, it's, 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 it's not perfect at this point. GWR, we've already got the Iron Duke, and we've got Firefly. Um, some more modern G GWR stock will be coming at some point. Um, but, yeah, let me pull this up. So we've got Firefly and Iron Duke, which are both Brunel uh, or, or Broad Gauge uh, locomotives. Let's see. So we've parked over here. This is working. Uh, so... The fun part is these can actually be filtered, um, and each of the un I think most, if not all, of the uh, augments can be filtered. Let's make um, let's just for fun let's make the fireflies frame because that's reasonably cheap. For standard gauge, so that's uh, I'm fifty percent sure this is going to work. So if I right click, nope. I was supposed to shift click there. Let me take you off the track. Why are you yelling at me and not working? Okay, so it, it apparently only works for certain things, and I've got too much crap in my inventory. What can I get rid of? I don't need sand. All right, so if I had another locomotive or something else I could place down, I would show you. Actually, I can show you. Um, so if I place this handcart frame over there, it lights up. Um, and let me filter both of these. Sorry, this is not the best example, but by clicking on them, it's if you look in the chat, it says set augment to act only upon uh, upon the handcar. Um, so if if I place down. The hand car lights up. Break that. Uh, oh, and by the way, breaking is shift right click. Um, if I place down the fire f uh, parts of the firefly here, it doesn't light up. But if I right click on this again and set it to act upon any stock, that well, uh, might be because it's only a, it's partially built, is that it's not lighting up. Again, this is why I plan things, and sometimes when I go, yeah, yeah, okay, so so now it's it'll act on anything. Uh, but I've set it to only act on the hand car. It turns off redstone. This is really useful if you're doing switching. So you can have, uh, let's say, only the, a f uh, the, the the K4 peppercorn. That's only allowed down this siding. Or maybe uh, I only want this sort of freight car being shunted in this direction. Um, so let me plop this away. Is there anything else I can get rid of? I can do that. Actually, no, that's just annoying. Okay. Let's see, Amtrak style train, definitely. There's already a few people working on that at this point. Um, so give it a couple weeks. Again, this mod's still in beta. Lots of stuff uh, still coming down the pipe. Um, let's go over one more augment. Um, let's do the speed retarder. Get the particles up there. All right. Oops. So let's... I really need to get rid of some of the crap in my inventory. Don't need that, don't need that. Okay. 
so what we're going to do, because I forgot, is make a redstone lever, or a uh, redstone signal. And plop you down, and power that. So, let's, uh, so, so tiny in my inventory, i got to fix that scaling. So let's, oh, that's backwards. So let's let that run. And that didn't stop. <laughs> it should have stopped. Uh, let's try doing this. This is how it's... Oh, I, I, I know why. Because it's supposed to act like this. And I need to make another redstone torch. Even the mod author sometimes forgets <laughs> how stuff is supposed to work. Alright. Signal. Redstone. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can have uh, the passenger trains uh, switched off into stations. Um, yeah, there's more uh, more coaches planned. Come on, stop. Don't make a lair out of me. <laughs> that didn't work as well as I'd hoped. But in, in theory, uh, you should be able to slow down the progress. You know, the, the hand car is a little bit weird because it sets the brake funny. Um, and I'll have to take a look into that. But if you had something like a freight car coming down the slope, coming onto this, um, it would uh, it would actually go through, and uh, it, these would uh, slow it down. But because this is a, dem is a demo, and I haven't actually uh, figured all the little miscellaneous details out ahead of time, uh, I can run into issues. Uh, so let's do one more thing to note: is if you want to build a uh, uh, what's called a hump yard is uh, you can place down uh, some slopes and disconnect... Didn't need to do that. Um, you can, no, let's do 15, so it's not quite as bad. Mm, I guess I can break some of this. Uh, is you can uh, get the cars going down a slope, disconnect them from the locomotive, and have themselves automatically sort based on the type of car they are. Uh, at some point, I'm planning on doing open computers integration, which would allow you to do, hey, this thing's filled with this sort of cargo, it should go into this here, this one's filled with this sort of cargo, it should go over in this direction, all sorts of neat stuff. All right, and if this is going to work, and I'm not 100% sure it's going to, is I can place this on the, there, and it automatically goes flying down. Whee! So, even if, even cars and, uh, 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 locomotives, pretty much anything with wheels, if you place it on a slope, it automatically does the physics calculations and it'll start sliding down the track. All right, uh, this is, we actually just hit about an hour since I started talking. Um, let's see, I think that's everything I wanted to cover for today. Uh, actually, oh, sorry, one last thing. Um, let's do switch. I'm just going to Pop that so I've got a few more pieces. Do I have enough? I do. Hmm. Some of the small switches don't work as well as I'd like. That ah. Okay, there we go. So, uh, just to show. Um, yeah, so in Invincible, just come ping me on Discord, tell me what issues you're having, I'll try and help out. Um, again, there's a reason why it's still in beta. <laughs> so, alright, so you can see this. Um, so without a redstone signal, the, tr uh, the trains go straight. With a redstone signal, the trains go down the branch, right here. So this allows you to, uh, this is this is how, like, let's say you had a detector on the rail here, you could say, hey, if it's this sort of train, send it off in this direction. But if it's this other sort of train, keep it going straight. Um, if you're just starting off, I recommend just using a lever here. And sometimes because trains, the, they break the, the bounding boxes are a little bit strong. Um, can you, is this going to work? I, I know how to do this with levers. I'm not sure I can do it with... That's nah, not going to work. Let me make a lever. Plop a lever here, and that'll work. If you're just starting off, this is what I recommend just to start playing with this. All right.
Da -da -da. Okay. Um, I th think that's everything I've got for now. I've run myself almost out of steel. Um, I don't have enough other missions prepared to go any longer, and my voice is uh, fading out. So, uh, one last round of questions, and then I'm going to call it a night. I should talk in the chat. Let's see. Yep, steel production is a bottleneck. Um, at some point, that steelworks mod is gonna um, is gonna make that a bit easier. Let's see. Seems good to me. Thanks. Yeah, glad people are enjoying it. Um, Let's see, read your first comment. Can you just uh, paste it? I've got a lot to scroll through. Um, okay, uh, so if you, oh, you're wondering where to get this mod, if you're, if you're wondering where to get it, um, let me post the link. Ah, uh, Joseph Young asks if uh, you can add augments for the headlamps and snowplows. Uh, definitely. Uh-oh, I'm getting attacked. <laughs> Gotta run. <laughs> but uh, that, that's that's the link. Traction sand, definitely, that's on the to-do list. That actually won't be that hard. There's, there's a chance that'll be in the 1.0. Um, oh, ask to fix the coupling. Again, it's it's in beta. There's a million and one things to fix and a million and one things to do, so it's, it's, it's there's only one of me. <laughs> as much as it'd be nice to fork myself into two or four or eight and work side by side myself, um, I can't. If you know anyone who likes programming, is familiar with Java, send them my way. Um, I'm always happy to uh, uh, have new people working alongside me. Um, the biggest bottleneck is my, my code is relatively neat. Minecraft, however, is not, which is where a lot of the craziness in the code base comes from. Uh, let's see, so uh, augments for steam engines like headlamps and snowplows, that will be coming. Optional parts, um, different whistles, maybe not in 1.0, but uh, there's a good chance that'll be in the 2.0 of the mod. Uh, yep, traction sand I got there. Let's see, is there a Union, uh, Union Pacific turbine engine in the train mod? Not yet, but if someone models it, I will definitely add it. Um, yeah. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I've, I've, there's also other mods that I'm working on that if you want to just start playing around with it without get, diving into the insanity that is um, uh, the uh, that is immersive railroading integrated with Minecraft. Um, th there's things like, instead of... Uh, if you've seen some of my older videos, as the trains go between chunk batteries and you're looking in a certain direction, they start blinking in and out, out of existence. I got a ton of complaints about that. And it turns out that uh, Minecraft does not actually support rendering and calling entities that are bigger than pretty much 2x2, two two, which is the size of the largest entity. When you start having entities that span multiple chunks and are rendered in multiple chunks, their whole, the whole rendering system doesn't actually work. So when Minecraft says, hey, you should render a train here, I'm like, okay, and I, I don't do anything. And then after all the other, other rendering is done, after it's rendered all the other things in the world, um, there's a hook I tie into which says, hey, is there anything else you want to render? And I'm like, yep. And I go through and render all the, all the trains in my mod, uh, which is the reason that it works and doesn't blink anymore. And as far as I know, without doing a core mod in Minecraft, there's no way around it. Um, but anyways, I'm getting a little bit off, off topic here. Um, I've got another mod, Winter Wonderland. That's a lot easier to cut your teeth on, start getting uh, familiar with, with uh, the Java programming and how that interacts with Minecraft. Um, and the Prospectus mod, which um, if you were early to the stream, you got to see. Um, that's actually really, that's, that's almost one of the simpler Minecraft mods that you could make. 
Um, and that'll be up on GitHub and probably released this weekend. Um, and s some information about uh, the mods I'm running. Um, I'm just running stock uh, immersive engineering, immersive railroading, um, immersive petroleum, what else? Um, Dog and Blue Worlds, which I'm always mispronouncing. Um, JEI, uh, what else? Uh, storage drawers, and I, uh, oh yeah, a, a Tree Capitator. But other than that, this is uh, pretty standard. Uh, at some point, uh, I was thinking about, uh, I might do world down, if, uh, leave, a, leave a comment and let me know if you want a world download um, as I go through these tutorials so you can play with the machines, play with the resources. Um, I'm, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to set this up. At some point, I might turn this into a, a public server. We'll see. I've, I've just got it hosted on a cloud server somewhere. But yeah, uh, glad uh, I got a bu bunch of people uh, asking g uh, good questions. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching the stream. And uh, I'll try and do this maybe on a weekly basis. We'll see how much free time I have. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching.